with the trade deadline coming and going yesterday afternoon there were a flurry of trades that went by in this video we're going to be talking about a bunch of under the radar moves that really didn't get a whole lot of headline attention that are going to impact each club before we get started you guys know the drill hit that like button subscribe i got more trade deadline content coming to you for a bunch of videos that i miss i think like six of them of big actual headline trades from that broke after three o'clock that i really wasn't able to make a video on coming out soon you don't want to miss those. All righty. First up, this trade was a couple days before the trade deadline. It completely went over my radar. Nicky Lopez was traded from the Kansas City Royals to the Atlanta Braves in exchange for left-handed pitcher Taylor Hearn. And Taylor was acquired from the Rangers by the Braves for just cash considerations. And they were able to trade him for Nicky Lopez. Overall, Nicky Lopez's season's hitting 213, zero home runs. 13 RBIs and 604 OPS in 160 at bats. He's a career 248 hitter with a 628 OPS, a 73 career OPS plus. Lopez really didn't have a place to play, and he's a free agent after the 2025 season. And for the Braves, you're getting a utility infielder that plays solid defense for basically someone you acquired for cash considerations. To me, that is an incredible deal for you guys. And it is very good for the Braves. I can give you an A just because you basically gave up nothing. I think Lopez can contribute for you guys. And the Royals, you get a D. Like, I don't understand why you're selling so low on Nicky Lopez. You could have gotten, I think, in my opinion, a lot more. Next up, the Giants and Mariners struck a trade that sent A.J. Pollock and Mark Mathis to the San Francisco in exchange for a player to be named later or cash considerations. Pollock is the bigger name in this trade, but he's only hitting 169 with five home runs. He's a free agent after this season and has struggled mightily this season. He's a career 273 hitter with 145 home runs in the 792 OPS. Pollock is very, very familiar with the National League West. He's played with Arizona and All-Star in 2015, played with the Dodgers, then went to Chicago, and then this season signed with Seattle and then got traded at the deadline. Pollock in 2021 with the Dodgers hit 297 with 27 home runs. So the 35 year old is only a couple years removed from playing that really good baseball in Los Angeles. So if he's back on the West Coast in the National League, he could be a very impactful bat for them. Now, Mark Mathis is coming back to his hometown team. He's born in Santa Clara, California. It's his actual 29th birthday today. And this season, he's hitting 231 with no bombs and 52 at bats, a career 249 hitter with six home runs and 169 at bats. Mathis had a solid year last year, 277 and 65 at bats with five home runs with Texas. He can play second base, right field, he can DH. So Mathis really just a utility man that the Giants are acquiring. And for a player to be named later or cast considerations, that is a very solid trade. Next up, the Rays acquired Alex Jackson, the catcher from the Brewers, in exchange for Evan McKendry. Jackson and his career is hitting 141 with three home runs, 163 at bats. Really hasn't played at the big leagues this season. However, this season in AAA, he's hitting 286 with 12 home runs and a 913 OPS. Jackson can also play the corner outfield along with uh, catcher, so he could be very valuable for Tampa. Going over in this trade is Evan McKendry. McKendry this season in AAA, he has a 4 ERA and 96 and two third innings pitch, 15 starts. He's struck out 95 and walked 28 to bring his whip to a 1.169 whip. McKendry is not ranked in the Brewers' top 30 prospects according to MLB Pipeline, and likely this move is depth for both teams. The Brewers also made another trade sending infielder Luis Urias to the Boston Red Sox in exchange for Bradley Blalock. Urias a season 145 average with one home run, career 235 average with 46 home runs. Last season hit 239 with 16 home runs the year before that 249 with 23 home runs. So Luis Urias has the production and could contribute in Fenway. Urias just hasn't been playing every day, and I think that's really hurt him. And with the Red Sox, he still probably won't play every day, but he has a chance to be a contributor. Bradley, in a mix between low A and high A, has a 2.19 ERA and 53 and a third innings pitched. He struck it out 58, only walked 13, and has a 1.013 whip. He is now going to be the number 15 ranked prospect in the or in the brewers organization his scouting grades are a 60 fastball 55 curveball 50 slider 45 splitter 50 control for an order overall of 45 mid 90s fastball so overall for luis arias he does have control for a while after the 2025 season really like this trade next up the yankees made a couple moves acquiring kenyan middleton and 
Spencer Howard from their respective teams. Kenyon Middleton this season has a 396 ERA in 36 and a third innings pitch, 47 strikeouts and a 1.349 whip, career 4 ERA in 180 innings pitched. By far this season is his best season since his rookie year with Los Angeles where he threw 58 and a third innings pitched to a 3.86 ERA. And the Yankees, they kind of held pat. They traded Juan Carrela in the deal who has a 3.67 ERA in 83 and a third innings pitch, struck it out 109 to walk 32. He has a 1.164 whip in high A for the Yankees. And then Spencer Howard this year has really struggled. 10.8 ERA. His career 7-2-0 ERA and 115 innings pitch really has never put it together between Philly and Texas. So if the Yankees can fix him, it's good, but kind of a BP pitcher in that ballpark. Overall, the Yankees, I really didn't understand what you guys did at this trade deadline. Next up, the Mets went out and got a pair of relief pitchers for cash considerations from the Los Angeles Dodgers. They acquired Phil Bickford and Adam Kalarik. Uh, Bickford this season has a 5-1-4 ERA in 42 innings pitched, career 4-4-0 ERA in 155 in a third innings pitched, really good 2021 with the Dodgers, he had a 2-5-0 ERA in 50 innings pitched, and then Kalerik has a career 3-7-3 ERA in 144 and two-third innings pitched, doesn't strike out a lot of guys, stop throwing lefty, and he's probably also, like I said, both these guys are going to be death relievers for the Mets. And, and both have control beyond this season too. So if the Mets decide that they want to flip them for somebody, it's potentially an option for them this off season or at next trade deadline, depending on the route they decide to go. A video on the Mets and what their trade deadline means for them coming out soon. Next, the Phillies and Pirates swapped Bailey Falter for Rodolfo Castro. Falter this season is a lefty with a 5-1-3 ERA and 40 in a third innings pitch. Career 4-5-6 ERA, 158 innings pitched. Last season with Philadelphia, his best season, 3-8-6 ERA in 84 innings. He started 16 games for the Phillies, part of that World Series run that they made. And then going over to Philadelphia, Rodolfo Castro, 2-2-8 ERA in six, with six home runs in 197 at bat, 672 OPS. Career 226 hitter with 22 home runs, 695 OPS in an entire season. Castro has a little bit of pop and really just hasn't put everything together. Overall, I think this is a fair trade. Both It kind of favors both sides. Depth in the rotation for the Pirates, depth in the infield for the Phillies. Can't really go wrong with either. Next up, the White Sox acquire Luis Patino from the Rays in exchange for just cash considerations. The Rays got Patino from the Padres in the Blake Snell trade, which is looking even better for San Diego because Patino's never pitched well in the big leagues. 5-2-3 ERA in 118 and two-thirds innings. He struggled with injuries, been really ineffective for Tampa. So going over the White Sox, who really can't develop pitchers. I mean, if you guys get Patino back to his top five prospect form, you guys deserve a lot of credit. You're taking a flyer just for cash, nothing's going to hurt you. Penultimate trade in this video, the Mariners acquired Edward Bizzardo from the Orioles in exchange for Logan Reinhardt. Bizzardo, 15-4-3 ERA, nothing much. 3-7-4 career ERA in 21 and a two-thirds innings pitch. A free agent after the 2028 season. Last season with Boston had uh, 2-7-6 ERA in 16 and a third innings pitch. A whip under one, 11 strikeouts, four walks in 16 innings. Reinhardt is a minor league pitcher that was with Seattle. He had a 2-8-4 ERA in 31 games. He had 38 innings pitched and a 1.053 whip, 51 strikeouts to 12 walks, essentially just trading low-end relief pitching and hopefully they pan out for the other team. In the final trade in this video, the Rays acquired Adrian Sampson, Manuel Rodriguez, and international free agent bonus pool money from the Cubs in exchange for minor league pitcher Josh Robinson. In the career for Sampson, he has a 4-4-3 ERA and 292 innings and two-thirds innings pitched, 219 strikeouts, and a 1.350 whip. Manuel Rodriguez from Mexico has a 4.88 ERA and 31 and a third innings pitched. Last season for the Cubs in 13 two-thirds innings pitched, 3.29 ERA, so some potential of the Rays. They're going to work with them. And for Josh Robinson, who has a 4.50 ERA in 36 innings uh, with Tampa Bay's AAA affiliate, Overall, not a big impact move for either side. It's just trading depth and hoping that you can develop pitchers and get them back to their old ways but yeah those are a bunch of small trades that went down at the deadline let me know what you guys think about any of these trades was your team involved in any of them do you think your team won the trade lost the trade these again aren't really going to impact the big league clubs at much of a level that you know max scherzer would or even a jack flaherty you know jace peterson will but definitely impactful moves that 
could affect the clubs in many years to come. I want to know what you guys think about them in the comment section below. As always, hit that like button, subscribe. I got much more videos coming. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.